Hello everybody, Martin here and I hope you had a lovely Christmas. Today we will continue with our helmet modeling and texturing series and this time we will have a look at reinforcing the edges of the helmet as well as some first basic hair particles. So let's get to it! Now let's actually focus on the reinforced edges of the helmet we touched on in the first part and which we can now finish. So let's start by selecting the faces directly neighboring the reinforced edge for which you can use the handy paint selection tool activated by C. Let's end the selection here and first hit S and X to scale the face on X axis and then G and X to push them slightly towards the center of the helmet. To make the reinforcing a bit more pronounced, Alt select the loop edge, deselect this front part, the part around the eyes and this back part and then move it slightly on the X axis outwards. And that's looking like something we want. Now we can take these back edges and push them in Y direction. We can also add a new edge loop here to actually make the reinforcing even sharper. And while we're at it, we can mark this edge as a UV seam. I have this option in my favorites menu, but you can simply Alt select it and go to the edge menu and mark seam. And do the same thing up here with this edge loop. Oh, and actually now looking at it, I think I will push this vertex up a bit with the edge slide tool. Cool, I like it. I hope you like your results too. And if not, well, this is a perfect time to start over. <laughs> nah, just kidding. There is nothing that can't be fixed by a lot of pushing and pulling on edges and reshaping geometry. Though it's sometimes true that starting over with the newly gained knowledge is your best bet. Anyway, I'm sure you have nice looking helmet at this point and you can continue working on it. One little detail we can do up here is actually selecting the side vertices and extruding them inwards with the scaling tool and then pushing them under the surface as well as doing some additional little shaping of this area if you find it necessary. Previously I mentioned we can apply the mirror modifier to get rid of the sharp middle edge here. You just go in, apply the modifier and dissolve this middle row of vertices which instantly makes the front of the helmet smoother. However, at this point there is still time to go in, rotate around the model and see areas you maybe want to improve. For example, let's maybe edge slide this edge loop or actually just these vertices in the front slightly to the side to even out the topology there. Hmm, better, I think. Though the eyebrow now goes through the helmet, so let's solve it by scaling the whole mesh on the Y axis and then maybe on the X axis as well. Now of course we need to fix this area where there is a gap now. Oh and by the way, anytime you mess up your symmetry on the model after you've applied the modifier, maybe do some changes on one side and forget to do them on the other side as well, you can simply redo the process. So add back the middle row of vertices in here with Ctrl R and then go into the vertex mode, select half of the model in the front view. I usually select vertices and choose the delete vertices option. Delete the stragglers and then add the mirror modifier again and push it above the other modifiers. And now let's have a bit of relaxation with pushing and pulling of the vertices. Just kidding, we're done. To actually see the normals and how they really bend, it's sometimes a good idea to change materials on your model, for example with these matte caps. I like to use this car paint material just to quickly have a look at how the light bends on the surface of the helmet when the material's specularity is high. And it's actually looking quite good, maybe except for this area where there is a harder edge. So let's push these vertices slightly to the side. One thing we can do as well is to go to the sculpt mode, here 
make sure that the symmetry on X is active. And very softly, tap the various areas with smooth brush to even out the topology. A click here and a click there, but again, be very careful with this. You can easily mess up your geometry like this. In fact, let me now change the matcap to something else. Let's choose this studio light matcap, which has some specularity, but not nearly as much. This may actually be a better material for preview. So a few more changes on the edges and smoothing out some areas and we're done. You can also push this back part down a bit so that it covers more of the neck. Now just to have a better idea of how the helmet is going to look as a whole, let's add some preview hair particles. Actually first apply the sub demodifier on this stripe of polygons just so that the particles have more geometry to work with. Then go to the particles menu and add a particle settings slot here. Change the type to hair and now it's obviously too long. So just lower the length in the emission settings. It will vary depending on the size of your model. Actually this helmet might be a tad too big since I am now using a hair length of two meters. So the whole thing is probably giant, but we can always scale down later. To add a bit of resolution to the hair, you can activate this B spline option and then to add more hair particles, add some children to each hair. Simple system with default settings will do for now. Just go to this clamping curve, check the use clamp curve option and change the curve here. Just grab the left point and push it down. This ensures that while at the root of the hair, the particles will grow in a regular fashion and not stray away from the parent hair. At the end, they will be a bit unruly, stick out to various sides. You can even lower this right part of the curve so that the ends clump a bit as well. Finally, let's jump into the particle mode and with a basic comb brush, Let's start playing around with the shape of the particles, pulling these edge ones down like gravity is influencing them, which it should. This is usually the first step I do when creating my crests. The second one is going to the front view and pulling on the top sides of the hair to make them puffed out at the top. You can also use the puff tool, but it's hardly ever reliable for this sort of job. So I just manually go in with the comp tool. Then just scale your particle base so that it's inside of the crest holder. One important thing you should do at this point is parenting your particle base to the holder since you don't want the crest particles to leave it if you move the helmet. Just select the particle base, then shift select the crest holder, hit P and choose parent object while keeping transforms. You can then even scale the whole crest holder if you find it may be too large, like me. Just change the origin point of the object or simply just shift right click in the viewport for example here, change this pivot option to 3D cursor and scale the geometry down. One last push on these back vertices on the helmet and we are done here. I think now we have a much better idea about the whole proportions of our helmet and its crest. And if you happen to realize your hair is still too long, you will actually find out that after messing around in the particle edit mode, you can no longer change the overall emission length. So let's instead do it with this particle edit cut tool, carefully trace around the hair where you want to remove parts of them. Try to make the length a bit regular, but not too much because a little bit of unevenness will add more believability to the crest. And since many of these crests had a longer horse hair in the back, you can use this length tool to achieve that. Finally, do not show the particle base in the viewport, just hide it here. Maybe change a matcap and we are done with this part of the tutorial. In the next part, I will show you how to model the little spiral on the side of our helmet. So, see you next time, Martin out.